Hello, I'm Ken James, and welcome to Chef to Chef. If you like dining out or even cooking at home, then this is the program for you. In this series, we'll be tasting some of Australia's multicultural cuisines. We'll meet some of the country's best chefs, see their culinary skills, and learn a few of their tricks and tips on the way. From little hidden away bistros to five-star establishments, Chef to Chef has a table waiting for you. I'm here with Eduardo Charlie Charlie, who is the executive chef of the Sheraton Towers Hotel. Eddie, this appears to be the pulse, the living heart of the, uh, of the hotel, mm -hmm. right in the kitchen. Uh -huh. and how many staff do you have working for you? We have about total 44 chefs working in the whole hotel, and we have about another 19 um, stewards or kitchen hands that yes. works as well. Well, Eddie, I'm getting hungry. Let's go and have a look at the kitchen and what they've got to offer. With such a large staff here of chefs, they have different names and terminology. Rachel is a chef to party and she's making a gravlax. So can you explain exactly what Rachel's doing to our audience? She's uh, preparing um, these, uh, this gravlax, she's cutting it as thin as possible. Uh -huh. This is part of the a la carte menu for the brasserie. Uh -huh. So every day they have to slice a few. Just, just in case it gets ready, they have some slice up. As you can see, it requires a lot of skill to actually cut it as thin as possible. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful. Every team needs a leader, and Eddie, the executive chef, gathers his uh, chefs together for a briefing every morning to discuss the re cuisine requirements for the day. Just a reminder again, the Prime Minister is staying with us again. So these are the dates. Um, we have him coming on the 26th of November, the 1st of December, and the 4th... <laughs> Included in the buffet are a series of hot dishes as well to make sure the clientele never go hungry. And coming up next, what we all like, sweets. Let's cook. Andre is the commissary chef in charge of the larder and the patisserie. And today's going to make for us a mini croquembouche. Can you show us how you do it? So what I'm doing is, I make a choux paste, right? Is water with butter, a little bit of touch of salt, right? And when it's boiling, you have to take out from the, the, the fire, right? You, you add your flour on it, okay? And you whisk it. Okay, and you can see the, the flour start to uh, absorb all the, all the liquid, okay? That's it. You make sure it gets dry, you don't see any more flour left on your pan. Putting back on the stove, right? And you make sure it dry up so you got no humidity left on your uh, shoe paste. So you have to mix normally eggs by eggs, right? So I just put about one by one, okay? And what you get on the end is, I'll show you, all the guys. See? Little shoe bones there. Huh? You make them smaller and in the oven they'll get larger. Yeah, that's good from there. They'll come to that size. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I use is eggs, okay? Mix my sugar in there. Uh huh. Caster sugar? Caster sugar, yeah. Okay. Then you add your flowers. Once again, plain flour? Plain flour. Just plain flour. Easy. Okay. That's sort of crusted. Not self raising or? No, no, just plain flour. You put your milk in there, about three quarters of your milk. Okay. In there. Put us back. You stir it, right? Quick fire, three minutes, and be ready. Okay? Okay. Then I add my banana liqueur on it. Okay. See? Uh-huh. Quite a bit. You know? Okay. Mmm. Flavor is lovely. Ah, it's not beautiful. And the shoe bones, you make a little walls in eye inside. Ah. And you fill them up. Put us inside. Ah. Okay. So I make a caramel. Uh-huh. Just a normal caramel. Mm -hmm. Alright. And so make sure you don't get burned your fingers. Uh -huh. Use these things. Uh -huh. Ah. And you put it back straight on the aluminium paper like that. And I'll show you why after. Yeah. 
Ah, that's it. And the sugar will stay for two or three hours. A little bit of sugar. If you, if you can take that, a little bit of sugar there. Why is that there? Actually, it's when I make a homemade pistachio ice cream. Yes. So when you put a bit of sugar on the plate, so let like the ice cream don't melt straight away on the plate. Ah, so you put, nice the piece of, you put the piece of ice cream on top of the sugar yep. and it won't melt. That's it. Good little trick. So you put a little bit your cocoa with glass here. Yes, right? beautiful. Okay. Put it, your strawberries up. Put on your plate. Yes. We we'll stand up together. Ah. Okay. Ah. See? The pistachio is so good, come on, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Saffron and uh, vanilla syrup. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And cheese. Go. Cheese. I want that. Voila. Voila. Ah, wait. I'm sorry about that. But there's more. Yeah, there is more. I thought <laughs> in my, my little touch. Eiffel there. Tower. That's it. <laughs> and voila. Andre, and it's magnificent. You deserve a round of applause for that. Well done. Thank you very much. Masterpiece. Food comes in many forms, not just for eating, but also as a work of art. And here we have a kitchen artist at work. been ordered by the guests. Now it's time for the chef to prepare them. I've asked Robert to send a tree. He has to send it. Here we go. Right. One Pacific oysters, one roast squab, followed by a pizza and a snapper. Well, after the break, we'll meet well-known wine buff Gary Crittenden to discuss the wine of the week. 